Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, February 16th, 2022 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Quick diary today from Xavier looking at some of the bots that were hitting his mail server. Kind of interesting uh, breakdown on where the bots are coming from and what operating systems they're running. Interestingly, there appear to be a couple that are apparently associated with industrial control systems, but uh, well, should really be a huge surprise that they get infected as well and then used as as bots in order to send malware to mail servers or in this case just trying to brute force mail server credentials. And Sophos has an interesting blog post with some details of new developments uh, regarding the Squirrel Waffle uh, malware. This malware has first shown up uh, September last year and it has sort of specialized on vulnerable exchange servers. So it uses the well-known proxy logon and proxy shell uh, vulnerabilities and exploits in order uh, to attack uh, exchange server once uh, they have access to the exchange server they'll inject themselves into email threats and try to spread either malware or even then conduct a business email compromise now uh, lately apparently what is happening after uh, the attacker is ejected from the exchange server so uh, they got detected and the fraudulent accounts uh, got uh, removed they're now continuing to basically used the knowledge they gathered while they had access to the exchange server to inject emails from lookalike domains and apparently at least in one case they were successful in getting a victim to trigger a money transfer which was luckily blocked by a participating bank. So keep that in mind if you are running into an exploited exchange server that even if the attacker no longer has access to it, they may still use some of the knowledge they collected uh, while they had access to exchange server to continue their fraud attempts. And then we got uh, details regarding a recently patched vulnerability in Western uh, Digital uh, MyCloud Pro Series PR4100. Uh, systems. This is a remote code execution vulnerability. It's kind of interesting in that these systems, they will periodically check if uh, they are able to reach the cloud-based uh, uh, systems and uh, the response coming back, and this all happens uh, over HTTP, is then saved on the system and parsed. The problem here is that because it's HTTP, an attacker can inject their own content and because the way it is parsed, it's easy to inject a command that will then be executed. The only thing the attacker has to do is inject the command as part of the first line of the HTTP response. Usually you have this HTTP 1.1 uh, 200 OK. If you're replacing OK with a command in backticks, then this command will be executed. So it does require a machine in the middle position in order to execute uh, this. But as usual, make sure that your network-based storage devices are up to date. This vulnerability was found by IoT Inspector as part of a pwn-to-own contest. Uh, they say they also found vulnerabilities in the Netgear Nighthawk smart Wi-Fi router, as well as in the, well, as they call it, uh, good old friend, uh, uh, the Cisco RV340. The other vulnerabilities, uh, they will uh, release uh, details uh, later, so uh, expect more blog posts from IoT Inspector about those vulnerabilities vulnerabilities. And then we have four vulnerabilities in Nui Baby Monitors. It's spelled N-O-O-I-E 
and these vulnerabilities have not been patched yet. Bitdefender found these vulnerabilities in unauthenticated MQTT information leak. Then we do have an unauthorized access to the RTSPS stream, a stack-based overflow uh, with remote code execution, as well as missing access control for an AWS bucket. Bitdefender has notified Nui and has made some contact with them but apparently there is uh, no actual uh, patch coming uh, from the company. Bitdefender does have a couple tips on how you could possibly defend yourself here. Uh, what I find particularly concerning, of course, is the AWS bucket here, uh, because that's really out of your control. For the other systems, of course, make sure these systems are not directly accessible. Well, that's it for today. Again, if I missed the story, uh, please let me know. Please let me know if there are any other sources I should cover here. Uh, thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.